Throughout the years, designers working on the Final Fantasy franchise have introduced countless jobs. Many have been inspired by high fantasy, granting players the ability to cast magic or play the role of the chivalrous knight. But that's not always been the case, and one such job that's always been a bit more grounded is the monk. Often opting to use their bare hands as weapons, monks have been ever-present since their debut appearance, and as the franchise has evolved, so too has the application of monks. It has seen various established traits grafted to numerous playable characters such as Sabin Figaro and Tifa Lockhart, and there have been countless moves and abilities added to help improve their damage dealing utility. It means that when looking at the monk as a whole, even though core aspects have stayed the same, there's also been a lot of change over the years. And throughout this video, we hope to take you on a rather expansive journey as we explore the rather unorthodox path of evolution taken across every single appearance of the monk job. It's quite well known that tabletop role-playing games were a source of inspiration for the creators working on the original Final Fantasy, and on that basis, the appearance of Monk as one of the six starting jobs made sense, as it appeared as part of the Dungeons & Dragons Blackmoor campaign as a subclass of Cleric. But what's interesting is that even though some aspects of the job were carried over into Final Fantasy, others were disregarded, and it helped to make the job a bit more original. Now one of the core elements that made up the tabletop role-playing monk class was its loose association with religion. In some regards, this would see them appear as similar to Christian monks, as they would have an alignment with holy, but even though they would have strong proficiency with almost all weapon types, they would also have bonuses when fighting barehanded, as well as strong internal healing abilities and martial techniques, something that made them appear closer to Buddhist monks. When work began in earnest on what would become Final Fantasy, Koichi Ishii came up with the notion of having a party and associated jobs for its members. Akitoshi Kawazu was then responsible for determining which jobs would feature, and he was drawn to the monk due to not just its ability to act as another physical damage dealing job, but that it could be made quite unique in comparison to the warrior and thief due to its focus on unarmed combat as opposed to using weapons. However, whereas Dungeons and Dragons chose to use Christians and Buddhist monks as a source of inspiration, Kawazu looked a bit closer to home and opted to model the function of monks on Japanese martial artists. This was evidenced in numerous aspects of visual design, but also with gameplay application, as not only did the monk wear a gi, they also wore a black belt, something that has since gained a strong association with Japanese martial arts. The gi itself was blue, an element that was not as common, but the usage of blue gis had started to become adopted within judo as a way of distinguishing between competitors. With a headband also incorporated into the design, outside of the gi being blue as opposed to white, it meant the standard monk design wasn't too dissimilar from the design used for Ryu in Street Fighter, who was based on Matsutatsu Oyama, the founder of Kyokushin Karate. Another interesting fact was that even though monks were billed as bare-handed fighters, they could also use staves and nunchucks, and in the case of the latter, nunchucks had a strong association with Okinawan Karate and Kobudo. It would also often be advised for monks to make use of nunchucks until their fists were strong enough to deal more damage, and that was because their unarmed damage output was based on their character level as opposed to any of their attributes. Monks would also have their defensive stats associated with their level as opposed to the armor they wore, and this was because they were given very high HP and high vitality, allowing them to comparatively gain more HP per level than any of the other jobs. It would be possible to upgrade Monk to the Master Job or Super Monk, as it was known in the Japanese version, but they were almost identical in terms of stats and performance in combat, the only difference being that they gained more magic defense when leveling up. It meant that even though there were no specific moves associated with Monks or Masters, this all provided a solid foundation, and some of the established traits were present in Final Fantasy II, despite the concept of characters having specific jobs being abandoned. One of the more subtle elements of Final Fantasy II came with the guest characters. Even though they could be moulded just like the main playable cast, many of them came with specific weapons, traits and attributes that associated them with certain jobs, and in the case of Josef, it was quite clear that he was meant to be a subtle allusion to the monk. And that was because, upon joining the party, Josef would come with his bare hand skill at level 2 and would fight unarmed. Further to this, Josef would have relatively high HP as well as high strength, stamina and agility, and this counterbalanced his low intelligence, spirit and magic. 
Final Fantasy III saw the successful return of the job system, and Monk again appeared as one of the starter jobs obtained from the Wind Crystal. They would again wear a blue gi, which would be accompanied by a blue headband and brown braces, and focus would be placed around them fighting barehanded, with nunchucks available to provide early level boosts, but a few other aspects were adjusted to enhance how the job performed. The most notable was that unarmed damage was no longer associated with character level, as it would instead be tied to job level. Monks also had strength prioritised, but even though they had high vitality and agility, growth was middling in comparison to many of the other physical jobs featured in the game. It meant that Monk had the potential to be useful, but there was little point continuing the job once the black belt became available, and if there was any doubt that there was an association with Japanese martial arts here, the black belt was known as the karateka in the Japanese version. They would function in the same way as the monk, able to use knuckles, even though they were still classified as nunchuck, to deal additional damage until the job level was high enough, but they would gain access to an ability called focus. When used, this would allow black belts to deal increased damage by channeling their thoughts at the cost of one turn. One charge would see damage output doubled, with a second charge seeing the output tripled, but if a third charge was attempted, the black belt would lose focus and have their HP halved as a consequence. With the developers wanting to enhance their storytelling as the franchise entered into the 16-bit era, jobs were mapped onto main cast members. But even though the monk did return, having been assigned to a supporting character called Yang Fang Laden, there were some fundamental changes. For one, there was a noticeable shift away from Japanese martial arts, as Yan's visual style was more akin to a kung fu practitioner than a karate doka. It would see the blue gi abandoned, as Yang was now shirtless, wore bright red trousers and a yellow sash, and had a shaved head with accompanying ponytail. To further this, and create an association with Buddhist or Shaolin monks, many of the other monks found in Fabul would also have dots on their heads used to show the journey they had undertaken. Changes were also evidenced with how Yang performed in combat, as even though he would deal incredible damage unarmed, with damage reverting back to the Final Fantasy II method of being associated with strength, Yang could also use Knuckles, as they were now classified as their own type of weapon. However, unlike previous games, Knuckles would be primarily used to give Yan application in combat as opposed to increasing damage, as it would allow him to add elemental damage and status effects to his attacks. Outside of this, Yan had access to Focus, a move just introduced in Final Fantasy III, as well as two new abilities called Brace and Kick. Focus would have a similar application, allowing Yan to miss a turn to deal double damage with his next attack, however, this ability was removed for the North American release. Kick would then allow Yang to deal damage to every enemy, albeit with the individual damage reduced in comparison to a standard attack, and Brace would function as a much more effective version of the Defend command. Much of this would then be resurfaced when Yan appeared in re-releases, as well as Final Fantasy IV Interlude and The After Years. However, there would be a few enhancements, such as Focus being upgraded to Deadly if the disciplined armband was equipped. Despite the success of Final Fantasy IV, there were wholesale changes made throughout the development of Final Fantasy V, and one of the most important was the reintroduction of a job system that would allow characters to change their combat application on the fly. As part of this, the monk job would be unlocked via the Wind Crystal, just like in Final Fantasy III, and what was seen would end up being a consolidation of traits introduced in Final Fantasy IV. With there being five playable characters, there were five designs, and this doubled down on the shift seen with Yan, as Bart's and Galaf's appearances were near identical outside of having hair and Bart's wearing a jacket. The female characters would also wear outfits inspired by Chinese martial arts, with Lena wearing a Qi Pao just like Chun-Li, who had become immensely popular following the release of Street Fighter II the previous year. However, despite this change, monks reverted back to using bare hands, and Final Fantasy V actually represented the first game where they could not use any other weapons. As such, their damage was based on character level, just like in the original Final Fantasy. Kick was inherited from Final Fantasy IV, with it now able to deal full damage even if used from the back row, and Focus featured simpler mechanics. But while Brace was removed, it was replaced by a new ability, called Chakra. This would be a very unsubtle reference to Hinduism and Buddhism, as they are the focal point of numerous meditative practices used to cleanse and heal an individual's body and mind. In Final Fantasy V, it was used in a similar fashion, as not only would it heal, but it would remove the poison and darkness status effects. On top of this, monks would also gain access to passive abilities such as counter and percentage increases to their maximum HP. 
Final Fantasy VI saw the monk job used in a similar fashion to Final Fantasy IV, as it was assigned to Sabin Figaro, one of the game's supporting cast. But what we got to see was far more expansive than any previous iteration of the monk, and that applied to almost every facet of the job. The design of Sabin incorporated elements seen with Yan, Bartz, and Galuf, as it was once again more aligned with a kung fu practitioner, and even though he wasn't bald, Sabin also sported a ponytail. In FMVs, we also got to see Sabin shirtless, just like Galuf. Outside of that, Sabin would have high strength and high HP, and could use knuckles, but unlike previous iterations of the job, damage output was now aligned with the weapon wielded, and it meant there was no benefit to fighting barehanded. Now, even though Yan was involved with the story in Final Fantasy IV, from a narrative perspective there wasn't really anything that happened that was inherently related to him being a monk. It wasn't too dissimilar for Sabin, but we did get to learn that he was the prized pupil of a martial artist called Duncan Harcourt. It was via Duncan that Sabin would learn Blitz, and this would represent a significant evolution for the monk. By using Blitz, players would need to input memorised button commands and nod to the fighting game scene, and this would grant access to a wide array of moves that could be learned as Sabin levelled up. There would be 8 in total, with damage aligned with Sabin's magic stat, the first time this had ever been relevant to monks, and they provided Sabin with a lot of application. The most basic, Raging Fist, would see Sabin unleash a small combination attack, while Aura Cannon would deal wholly elemental damage, bringing back a subtle trait introduced with Yan. Meteor Strike would deal high physical damage to a single enemy, and has since become quite famous due to a certain train, while Rising Phoenix would allow Sabin to deal fire elemental damage. On top of this, there was also Razor Gale, which would deal wind elemental damage, Phantom Rush, which would deal non-elemental damage and ignore magic defense, as well as Chakra, which now healed other party members and cured an increased array of ailments, and Soul Spiral, which would restore HP and MP of other party members and cure even more status effects, but would come at the cost of removing Sabin from the battle. There was also an interesting nuance associated with Blitz, as even though God Hand was classified as Sabin's ultimate weapon, due to the damage output of Blitz being associated with magic, Tiger Fang would be preferable for increased damage output. With everything combined, it meant Sabin represented an incredible update to the monk framework, and it would be referenced by many monks that would appear throughout the years, including the one that would follow straight after. When development started on Final Fantasy VII, there were plans for each playable character to have an associated job. Some of these plans could still be seen within the final version, such as Sid being a Dragoon and Aerith being a Geomancer, but none epitomised this more than Tifa Lockhart. In early planning documents, Tifa was planned to be a shooter, a nod to shoot wrestling which had taken Japan by storm throughout the 1970s. By the time the final product had been released, even though this official designation was removed, Tifa's association with the monk job was quite clear. However, that's not to say there weren't some significant changes. For example, due to the change in thematic design, Tifa's appearance was much more modern and on the surface, that made it seem quite unlike any previous game. However, she did still wear a tank top like Savin, had a black belt and red braces, much like the earlier games, and sported a long ponytail that was designed to mirror a dolphin. Tifa also continued on with the narrative theme introduced with Sabin, as it was revealed that she learnt her martial arts from a master called Zangan, but when it came to gameplay, we got to see some more interesting deviations. Up until this point, monks had always had a strong focus on having high HP, high strength and high vitality, with agility or an equivalent stat seen as a secondary. However, in this particular game, even though Tifa did have high strength HP and dexterity relative to her other stats, most were middling when compared to the other characters in the roster, and her vitality was one of the worst. Tifa could also not fight barehanded, with her damage output linked with the knuckles she wore, and this introduced a weird micro-trend, as much like Sabin, it could be argued that Tifa's ultimate weapon, Premium Heart, isn't as useful as her second strongest weapon, God's Hand. Within traditional combat, Tifa would perform much like any other character in the game, with no inherently unique abilities. But there were numerous allusions to the monk housed within her limit break, with the first being that it was interactive. However, unlike Sabin's, which required the player to memorise input commands, players would need to use their reactions on a slot reel. There were no defensive moves available to Tifa, but two of the moves, Raging Fist and Meteor Strike, did pay direct reference to Sabin. Somersault, Water Kick, Dolphin Blow and Final Heaven were then unique to Tifa. Two martial artists would then be part of the playable roster of Before Crisis, dubbed Jugatu and Maru within Last Order. They would both have high HP, attack and defense, and would draw upon Tifa's weapon set to improve their performance in combat. <laughs> 
Final Fantasy Tactics reverted back to featuring a comprehensive job system, but even though Monk would feature, it would no longer be a starting job. Instead, it could only be accessed after Knight had been upgraded, and upon doing so, players would gain access to one of the best offensive jobs in the game. Monks would have high base attack and high HP, and their support ability would increase the effectiveness of their barehanded attacks. And this would be crucial, as they would not be able to wield any weapons. Instead, damage would be based upon a calculation that would take into consideration a unit's physical attack value and their bravery. Alongside this, monks would gain access to various martial arts, and the range of moves available would have clear similarities with Sabin, even if the way they were accessed was now much more straightforward. Chakra, Pummel, Aura Blast and Stigma Magic would act as equivalents of Raging Fist, Aura Cannon and Soul Spiral, but there were also some new moves such as Doom Fist, which hit a pressure point to invite a slow certain death via Doom, Shockwave, an Earth Elemental attack, and Revive, which could bring an ally back from the KO status. When combined with reaction abilities such as Counter and First Strike, a quintessential concept in martial arts called Sinosen, Sin, which relates to taking a preemptive action the instant an action is about to be launched upon you, it made this iteration of the monk pretty compelling. In Final Fantasy VIII, just as had been the case in Final Fantasy VII, certain characters featured allusions to prominent jobs of the past, and in the case of the monk, players had to look no further than Zell. We didn't learn anything interesting about how Zell learned his martial arts, but much like Tifa and Sabin, his damage output would be related to the knuckles that were equipped. For Jewel, we would also get to see a near direct tribute to Sabin's Blitz, as to deliver moves through Zell's Limit Break, players would need to input button combinations within an allotted amount of time. However, unlike Blitz, where players would only perform one move, with Jewel, they could keep using moves until the time limit expired. Given the volume of moves available, there was a mixture of historical and new moves, with Punch Rush, Meteor Strike, Dolphin Blow, Earth Slash and Final Heaven being brought forward from Final Fantasy VI, VII and Tactics, and with the player required to collect magazines to learn new moves, it served as a nice evolution for what had become the more modern appearance of monks. Even though Final Fantasy IX would have a heavy focus on nostalgia, and specific jobs would be assigned to named characters, none of them were designated as a monk. But that's not to say there weren't allusions to the venerable job, and many of them could be found when looking deeper at Amarant. Amarant would be restricted to using claws, a categorization of weapon that would include many classic monk weapons such as the Kaiser Knuckles and Tiger Fangs, and like many of the other modern iterations, they would be used as a primary source of calculating damage output. Amarant would also have very high HP and strength, also featuring decent speed, and would have access to numerous monk abilities including Chakra, Countdown, which would inflict the Doom status, and Revive, both of which had just been associated with monks in Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy X adopted a similar approach, with allusions to various jobs littered throughout the various characters, and in the case of Monk, the strongest affinity could actually be seen with Riku. Much like Amaranth, she would also be restricted to using claws, but many, many notable monk weapons would be housed within this category, and her ultimate weapon would be the God Hand. But outside of having a ponytail, there wasn't much else that positioned Riku as a monk, and she was much more closely aligned with the thief and chemist jobs. It wouldn't be until Final Fantasy XI that players would bear witness to another strong and purposeful showing of the monk, as not only did it appear as one of the starter jobs available to players right from the get-go, but we also got to see a bit of narrative exposition. Numerous monks would be encountered as part of the story, such as the legendary Matt, who would allow players to push beyond their limits but perhaps the strongest came via Cornelia. A human from Bastok, Cornelia sought training in the martial arts as a way of seeking revenge, and after being trained by Ogby, she would end up gaining incredible strength, even being recruited to Bastok's elite guard, the Mithril Musketeers. When using the job themselves, players would see a faithful interpretation that pulled on many past iterations to create something original. This would be evidenced across almost every aspect of the job, with damage serving as a prominent example. And that was because, unlike other jobs featured in Final Fantasy XI, hand-to-hand -hand damage and delay had a different damage calculation. It would see hand-to-hand -hand skill combined with damage provided by the weapon, allowing monks to still deal damage even if they chose not to equip a hand-to-hand -hand weapon. Monks would also benefit from passive traits that would increase the effectiveness of their hand-to-hand -hand combat, speed up combinations, and allowing their combinations to contain both fists as well as kicks. 
Traits would also include the ability to counter, apply a tactical guard, which kind of resurfaced the brace ability seen in Final Fantasy IV, as well as providing percentage increases to their maximum HP. Outside of this, monks would gain access to a huge array of abilities and weapon skills, which would act as an incredible tribute. This included the likes of Boost, Focus and Chakra, which would now add auto regen if performed alongside Invigorate, as well as Raging Fist, Spinning Attack and Final Heaven, and there were also a whole load of new moves introduced. This included, but was not limited to, Key Blast, One Inch Punch, the Siren Fist, Shoulder Tackle and the Tornado Kick. Monk would next be seen within Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, but its appearance was quite unorthodox, as it was no quintessential monk. Instead, players had access to the White Monk, which had a much stronger alignment to the Holy Element, and it was exclusive to the Bangar race. Unlike Monks in Tactics, even though there was an emphasis placed on HP, attack and magic power, White Monks had middling stats in comparison to other jobs. They could also equip Knuckles, as opposed to fighting barehanded, and they would be used to gain access to a variety of moves. Some were pulled directly from tactics such as Whirlwind, Earthrender and Revive, whereas others such as Chakra and Far Fist, which was a variant of Aura Cannon, pulled from the job's illustrious past. But due to the Holy alignment, White Monk also introduced two new moves, Exercise and Holy Sign. White Monks would resurface in Tactics A2, Tactics S and Crystal Defenders with similar application, and they would also appear as regular monk enemies in Revenant Wings, where they could even use Auto Regen, much like Amrand. But Final Fantasy Tactics AT would also introduce another variant of Monk, the Master Monk. This was no doubt meant as a throwback to the earliest days of the job, where Master acted as an upgrade for Monk in the original Final Fantasy, and that was the role it played here, acting as an upgrade for the White Monk. It meant some moves were inherited such as Holy Strike, and others were pulled in to complete the set, such as Lifebane, which could inflict Doom, and Inner Focus, which had a similar application to Chakra. The other bonus for Master Monks is that even though they would learn their moves from poles, they would receive a significant damage boost if fighting barehanded. When Final Fantasy XII released, its licensed board system created an experience that was quite similar to Final Fantasy II. It meant that characters could be moulded into certain job archetypes, but there was no real steer towards any particular path of development. The consequence, according to Hiroyuki Ito, was that most players just ended up creating six identical characters as it presented the easiest path to victory. And so, when work started on what would become Final Fantasy XII the International Zodiac Job System, Ito decided to make a fundamental change that would see the reintroduction of jobs. Monk was amongst the jobs chosen as part of this reshuffle, and it was associated with Virgo. It would see characters able to fight barehanded or with poles, most like in Tactics A2, and they would be given high HP as well as the ability to learn Brawler and every single battle or augment, which would see significant increases to their physical attack damage. This would then play in with the damage calculation, which was based on a combination of strength and character level. This would end up being a major defining trait, as there weren't many quintessential monk abilities present within the original game. However, monks would still have access to revive, focus and swiftness, but none were exclusive to the job. As it was designed as a modern day interpretation of the classic Final Fantasy game, the Four Heroes of Light was built around a pretty comprehensive job system called the Crown System. It would bring back many classic jobs, but even though there was a monk amongst the selection, its utility was completely different. It would see the monk have abilities that were more aligned with the necromancer job, as they had the ability to raise their dead allies and even summon an army of ghosts. Due to this shift, the monk was instead transplanted over to the fighter crown, and it was here that we would see a very faithful interpretation. Fighters could wield all types of weapons including spears, axes and even books, but their proficiency was low with the majority of them as they were intended to fight barehanded. As such, they had a passive trait that would see their unarmed damage boosted based on their strength stat, which was relatively high, along with their HP in comparison to other crowns. Alongside this, fighters had access to Combat, which was a version of Raging Fists, Jugular, which pulled from the enhanced version of Focus seen in Final Fantasy XI, allowing the fighter to perform a critical hit, and Chakra. Fighters would then have access to a move called Frenzy Fu, a fire-based combo to deal heavy damage. Final Fantasy XIII had limited focus on jobs, opting to instead use roles that were not exclusive to any character. But there was still an allusion to the monk, as Snow Villiers attacked barehanded, receiving his power from augments found within his coats, but he also had high HP and strength in comparison to other party members. 
In Lightning Returns, Lightning could also wear the martial monk garb, which had a similar colour scheme to the famed outfit worn by Bruce Lee in Game of Death. It would grant Lightning the soul of the fighter, boosting her HP by 10% and physical damage by 5%, and she would also gain access to the Whirlwind Kick, a nod to the Tornado Kick introduced in Final Fantasy XI. Knights of the Crystals, a spin-off game that acted as an extension of the Evil East franchise, featured a huge array of jobs, and alongside the monk, we also got to see quite a few variants. The basic male monk would be based on Yan, even including the random sword he carried in the Amano concept art, and they would have access to Rapid Fire Fist. Alongside this were the Fire Monk, Ice Monk and Thunder Monk, each able to perform an elemental punch, perhaps a nod back to Yang again, and the notion of providing utility through the equipping of different weapons. Acting as an extension to Monk, there was the Super Monk, Master Monk and Fist Master, with the martial artist acting as the most advanced iteration. Final Fantasy Dimensions was designed as a further extension of creating a modern day Final Fantasy experience using traditional elements, bringing that design ethos to mobile devices. But unlike the Four Heroes of Light, it was much more literal with its implementation. It would see Monk available to players as one of the starter jobs, and the individual character designs had a clear similarity to what was seen in Final Fantasy V. Monks would have high HP, high strength and high vitality, and they would be able to equip claws to increase their damage, with God's hands acting as the most powerful. In addition, monks would gain access to numerous abilities, such as kick and focus, which would harken back to that initial appearance as it could be charged multiple times, as well as aura blast, chakra, and raging fist. Final Fantasy XIV has featured the monk job ever since the first iteration, and it would act as an extension of the pugilist class. From a lore perspective, we got perhaps the most depth we'd ever seen in relation to the job. Although there was still a focus around people learning a rare martial form, we got to understand that much of it centered around unlocking their chakra. As we have seen many times before, monks would be able to wield knuckles, and their primary attribute would be strength, used to boost their attack power. They would also have access to many, many abilities, such as Masterful Blitz, which contained moves like Rising Phoenix and Phantom Rush, as well as the Final Heaven Limit Break. Many other abilities would also be inherited from Final Fantasy XI, such as Dragon Kick, Shoulder Tackle and Tornado Kick. There were also a few actions that would have internal focus, such as Second Wind, which would restore HP, and Deep Meditation, which would increase the chance of inflicting critical damage. Chakra would then become very integral to the job following a rework thanks to the job gauge, and this would be linked to the monk's ability to perform strong offensive abilities such as Forbidden Chakra and Enlightenment. Final Fantasy Type-0 featured an extensive cast of characters, each of which was aligned with a specific weapon type. As such, many of them adopted traits often seen with the classic jobs, and in the case of 8, as he used Knuckles, the natural association was Monk. However, despite the association being pretty obvious, the way 8 played was quite different from previous Monks, and there were almost no inherited moves. 8's combat would be based around the use of stances, which would change gameplay and grant access to specific moves. Wildfire Stance, for example, would see 8 able to fire a Key Blast, while Swift Wind Stance would see 8 able to execute rapid punch combinations. In terms of mobilities, there were many, but the one that drew from the past was Phantom Rush. But instead of dealing damage, it was instead made into a defensive move, allowing 8 to dodge all incoming attacks. As Final Fantasy Airborne Brigade acted as another throwback game, it was no surprise to see Monk featured as one of the starter jobs. They would fight using their bare hands, but could also use staves, and their damage output would be based on their strength attribute, as opposed to any other factors. But what made this particular job pretty special in the context of the evolution, was that it had an extensive amount of abilities, and although there were some new abilities introduced, many were clear references to the past. It would see access given to abilities introduced from all across the franchise, from the job's early days such as Kick, Aura Blast and Phantom Rush, through to the more modern iterations with abilities such as Dragon Kick and One Inch Punch. The upgraded job, Black Belt, then took things further, incorporating numerous abilities housed within the limit break of Zell, such as Heal Drop and Meteor Barret. Unlike its predecessor, the monk job that featured in Bravely Default was much more traditional. It would see characters able to equip knuckles and staves with HP and strength the standout attributes. Within their martial arts abilities, they would also gain access to numerous offensive and internal abilities, many of which emphasized the connection between the Bravely and Final Fantasy franchises. 
Invigorate, for example, was adapted from Focus, as it allowed the character to raise their physical attack for two turns, but just like when it was introduced in Final Fantasy III, if it failed, the character would take a hit to their own HP. Monks could also use Inner Alchemy, a version of Chakra, and had passive enhancements to increase their maximum HP, and many of these aspects were attained when the monk job returned in Bravely Second and Bravely Default 2. Final Fantasy Record Keeper has featured numerous forms of monk, including, but not limited to, the default job. This appeared as one of the core jobs, but due to this, it was quite poor in comparison to many of the other characters that could be obtained. As such, it offered limited stat growth, and there was only one soul break, Roundhouse. But it did introduce something, as alongside their fists, monks could also wield daggers. Alongside the monk, Record Keeper also featured references to many of the other monks that have appeared throughout the history of the franchise, including the likes of Tifa and Ida, with Josef and Amrad also being positioned as monks. In Final Fantasy Explorers, the monk was one of the first jobs made available to the player. It would allow players to focus on damage dealing, which would primarily come by equipping knuckles, but they could also use katanas and clubs. Their unique ability would be boost, which would act as a dynamic interpretation of focus, with the player able to hold the button down to deal more damage. They would also be able to use inner peace, a move that replicated the utility of brace, as when it was used it would prevent the player from being knocked back by the majority of enemy attacks. Unlike its predecessor, Final Fantasy Dimensions 2 dispersed with the traditional job system, with many of those jobs instead appearing as costumes that had limited impact on gameplay. Monk did however appear as an earth elemental eidolon that could be wielded by Mena, and its design was inspired by Ursula from Final Fantasy IV The After Years, who was Yang's daughter. Before it was shut down, Mobius Final Fantasy had featured many different iterations of Monk, with the most basic, the Trainee Monk, being introduced alongside a whole host of potential evolutions. This basic job would receive numerous HP and attack boosts, while also granting access to ever-powerful Knuckles, with its ultimate ability, Fists of Fury, only just introduced in Record Keeper as a move associated with Yosef. Trainee Monk could then be evolved into Monk, Pugilist, or Grappler. Monk could then further be upgraded to Battle Monk and Master Monk, and its ultimate ability, Blurred Strikes, would add auto regen. Pugilist would be upgraded to Karatika, an ode back to the original incarnations of the job, as well as the God Hand job, the first time this name had ever been used in this manner. Its ultimate ability would also be Tornado Kick. Grappler could be upgraded to Wrestler and Pankratiast, and served as a subtle nod back to the original intention for Tifa, who was meant to be a shoot fighter. Its move would be Spearing Tackle and would inflict stun. Alongside this, Master Monk would also be made into an independent job. This would be upgradable to two new jobs called Arslan and Avaga, and its ultimate ability would be Final Heaven. It was also the Hermit, which could be upgraded to Truth Seeker and Daoshi, and plenty of legendary jobs such as the Moogle Suit, Unbroken Hero that cemented the connection between Monk and Snow, Deep Diver, which lent on the Dolphin Association presented in Final Fantasy VII, Vanadiel Monk, which used Siren Fist as its ultimate, and the Agent of Scarlet Woe, which oddly established a connection between Vincent and the Monk job. Brave Exvius adopted a similar approach, aligning a few variants of the Monk job with specific characters such as Goken, Berg, and Shao. Combined, they adopted quite a few different traits and abilities. Berg, for example, had a basic ability set that was nearly identical to that used by Yan, as he could use Kick, Brace, and Chakra but by also having a passive 10% increase to HP, as well as Pummel and 100 Fists as Limit Bursts, it ended up being quite representative. Zhao would also have access to some of these abilities, but would have Counter and Brawler, as well as Limit Breaks that revolved around landing numerous hits in a flowing combination. This approach would then be adopted within both Dissidia Opera Omnia and War of the Visions Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Each would either resurface prominent monks from the history of the franchise, or introduce new characters that would exhibit monk traits, and it meant that even though the monk was never front and centre, assigned as the job of one of the most important story-centric characters, they would still end up being solid representation. And that brings us on to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Throughout many of our previous videos, especially the Summon Evolutions, we've spoken about how smart, selective and faithful the developers were when it came to how they presented the updated version of the summons. Many would bring forth prominent design traits from the initial appearance, supplementing with moves introduced as the franchise expanded. But in the case of Tifa Lockhart, the de facto monk in the game, it's difficult to say that the same approach was taken, at least when looking at superficial elements. 
Within the original game, Tifa had access to quite a wide array of moves within her Limit Break, and very few of them reappeared within the remake. Instead, outside of Somersault and Dolphin Flurry, Tifa was given access to a wide array of original abilities that would actually bring her much closer to the Monk job than her original appearance. Unbridled Strength was, for example, a more modern interpretation of the Focus ability. By using one ATB bar, it would see her increase her key, boosting the damage dealt by normal attacks, and much like some interpretations of Focus, it could then be stacked, something that would not only increase damage output further, but would grant Tifa access to an ever increasingly powerful finishing move, much like Masterful Blitz in Final Fantasy XIV. Two of these moves were throwbacks. Omni Strike represented Raging Fist, a move introduced with Sabin that became a recurring ability, and Rise and Fall, which served as a parallel to Beat Rush, Tifa's basic limit break in the original game. And with Star Shower also used to increase the strength of her next executed command, even though Tifa lacked the internal healing aspect of the job, the damage dealing potential was unreal. Now, looking at this evolution as a whole, it's safe to say that the monk has had a rather interesting journey. Even though it has been assigned with well known characters, Unlike some of the other jobs we've covered, being a monk has rarely been something that has been character defining, at least in comparison to say the numerous paladins and dragoons we've seen over the years. What's quite interesting however, is that there have been numerous thematic influences, and as developers have attempted to lean further into these, it's led to a huge volume of abilities that have become associated with the job over the years, as well as lots of different visual designs. We've also seen some monks wielding weapons, some fighting barehanded and having their raw strength determine their damage, while others have used hand-to-hand -hand weapons to enhance theirs. Others have seen holy alignment baked in as a fundamental aspect, but even though not all have incorporated notions of internal healing, one thing has almost always remained. Monks are capable of dealing incredible amounts of damage and are amongst the franchise's most powerful damage dealers, even if they are sometimes glass cannons. If you've made it to this part in the video, we really hope you enjoyed this evolutionary study, and if you did, please do consider giving us a like. I'd also recommend that if you do enjoy our evolutionary videos that you check out our Patreon as supporters get exclusive voting rights about what evolution topics we cover in the future. Alright everyone, with that this is Daryl signing out. I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of our Patreon and YouTube membership supporters, especially Anthony Hoffman, Benjamin Snow, the Livestream and Gregory who are super special Onion Night supporters. And of course, a big thank you to everyone for watching this video. I'll see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.